Um, cool. Welcome to the grand finale of the general open quiz. Uh, this quiz is being live streamed on our YouTube channel as we speak. Just give me a second. Uh, um, Cool. Welcome to the grand finale of the general open quiz. Uh, this quiz is being live streamed on our right. Uh, so we have all the finalists here. Hopefully, we'll just run through the finalists. Right. Uh, these are the rounds that we have for today. Uh, we have four simple rounds of quizzing. Uh, we'll be going on a simple direct and pass throughout all the rounds, including infinite pounds and so on. I'll run you through the rules uh, in just a little while. Simple rules, plus 10 throughout the quiz for a correct answer. Uh, no negatives uh, okay, if it's okay. on a direct or a pass. Right. Uh, for those of you who haven't quizzed before, uh, infinite pounds. So that means just to make sure things are fair, since we have 12 teams in today's finals. It's, it's, Once uh, a question is answered, the next question will go to the team that is seated next to the one who answered last, right? So if team one's direct passes to team four, team four answers it. The next question goes to team five. We'll have round one. And... Unlike you and two, correct? I'll just come to that, right? So, uh, right. So you have round one and round three in clockwise. That's one to 12. Uh, and then round two and four will be anti-clockwise 12 to one. If you are confident of the answer and want to pounce as we call it, Within the first 30 seconds of the questions appearing, the teams need to send in the answers on private chat to QM2, that's QM2 Vedang, or you can obviously wait your turn and just answer on direct for no negatives. We have, uh, as you can see, we have plus 10 for getting the answer right on pounds and minus 10 for getting it wrong. I'm repeating that it's plus 10 and minus 10 on pounds. One request is for all the finalists to switch on the camera and have your hands visible throughout the entire quiz. So there's no other form of quiz happening, right? Um, these are the top 12 teams. Uh, so we had one small change. One of the teams had to drop out. So uh, pass pass Palash has made it to the finals, right? Congratulations bargain team, uh, right? Just waiting for everyone to switch on the cameras. These are team numbers. So what we request you to do is just rename yourself. So pass pass palash, just rename yourself as one hyphen pass pass palash. So it becomes easier for us to track the scores. Once everyone has done that, don't use T5, team five and so on. Just use the number. It'll be easier for all of us to see. Thank you. Um, Vedan, you can just rename yourself from two to I'll do that for you. I like how Jason Bonvita renamed the cells as team number one, like confident right in the beginning. Some people are just joining in. Cool. Like I said, uh, just requesting all of you to just rename it as the number followed by your name. It'll be helpful for us. If you can rename yourself, great. Abhinav, team 10, team 7, whatever. Just rename yourself so that it's easier for us to view you on Zoom. Awesome. Let's start with the quiz. So the first round is simple starters. Uh, this question is going to start with team one. Uh, we're going to wait for around 30 seconds. Once I announce pounds is closed, even if you've sent in the guest to Vedang, it won't matter. Uh, he'll not consider at, at all. Right. So just 
wait, uh, uh, try to send in before I close pounds. I will announce a few seconds before I close pounds, right? This question goes to team one uh, uh, on direct. We run through to 12 teams. Here's the first question of today's quiz. Any doubt so far, folks? I'm switching on my video. Why did you inform us of how many questions there are with this? There are four rounds uh, in the entire quiz. Uh, that's eight questions in every round. That's 32 questions in total. I have no idea where this is. Rishabh and Siddharth, are you participating in today's quiz? Oh, sorry, Rishabh is from Ahmedabad. Uh, Siddharth, are you participating in today's quiz? Uh, so that's also from my side. Okay, cool. No worries. So cool. We have a full house uh, starting with question one to team one. All right. What word in Sanskrit or Hindi means literally three hours or a quarter of a day or a quarter of a night? This has led to a common Hindi word that we all use or are familiar with that refers to a particular time of the day. Right. So work this one out. Either tell me what is the word that means quarter of a day or the more familiar word that refers to a particular time of the day that all of us use and are familiar with. Okay, someone seems to have entered now. Okay, closing pounds in five. Anybody uh, team pouncing? Two has pound. Team two has just pounced. Team three has oh. also pounced. Five is pounced. Vedang? Uh, yeah. Five. Two, five. three, five, nine, ten, twelve. Okay. And pounds is closed, so no more teams can participate uh, in the pounds. Team one, this is your guess. Pass, pass, Palash. So we are guessing that it's Peher or Prahar. It's Do Peher. That's absolutely right. Uh, this is Peher uh, or Praher, right? Uh, which come, which means to a quarter of the day. And that's how we get do pehar, which is two quarters, which uh, refers to noon. Yes, for that. Sai, do I give points for do pehar and pehar because some people have That's either pehar. of them will work. Yes, absolutely. Either right. Ten, yes, either of them. I mentioned that in the question. Uh, okay. Right. Either of them absolutely work. Okay. All right. Right. Uh, so next question to team two. This is your direct. Right. The United States collaborated with India in the 1960s to place nuclear powered monitoring devices on a station across the Himalayas to spy on China and its nuclear test that it was carrying out during that time. And of course, they were doing other uh, missile firings and so on. Right. Why did this mission between India and United States fail? Right. So to set up a thermonuclear station on top of the Himalayas, this mission during the 60s failed. What is the unusual and ridiculous sounding reason why this mission failed? Anybody pouncing before we close pounce in another five seconds? Okay, Vedang pounces uh, team closed. Six pounds. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, team six pounds and closed. No, I'll accept team six, eleven, and Team 6, 3, 11, 12 pounds. Team 10, you, uh, your answer came in after the pounds was closed. Cool. So team 10 things not, are not accepted. Team 2, this is your guess. Uh, so we are guessing that they could not get materials up to the high altitudes in order to construct it. Nice guess. Team 3 pounds. Team uh, 4. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can see it now. Okay, I, I can still see the question on screen though. Team four, are you talking to us? Okay, oh, team four passes, team five, yes. Oh, wow. um, I'll say, so basically the US was using imperial, uh, imperial measurements. So basically imperial to metric, there was a mismatch. Good guess. That's not the right answer. Team six pounds, they team pounds. seven. Jason Bonvita. Uh, we say that uh, they got their geography wrong in the sense that they wanted to spy on, you know, China, but the location was such that, you know, it was not potentially conducive to spy on China, maybe it was facing 
India or Nepal or they got their geography wrong. Nice case. That sounds like a ridiculous sounding answer. The actual answer sounds even more ridiculous. Uh, team eight. Excel is here. If you can unmute yeah. yourself, yeah. Take a guess. Hello. Take a guess, guys. You're on mute. Uh, can we DM the answer over here? What? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Uh, our guess is that squirrels or birds accidentally uh, activated those. Squirrels or birds accidentally activated uh, uh, whatever they were carrying? No. Team 9? Uh, we'll say avalanche. There's an avalanche and so the mission failed. What happened because of avalanche? No, because of the avalanche, they could, I mean, the... Yeah, the ice fell and all that. Yeah, the ice fell and... Okay, ice fell. Uh, Team 10? Uh, Sir, actually, uh, they were carrying this fuel there, and then uh, there was a snowstorm, and then these things got lost. So it is still buried under this Nanda Devi in the ice. What got lost? Sir, the nuclear device. That's absolutely right. Uh, this mission actually failed uh, simply because they lost the plutonium core, right? Uh, so team nine, you were right. There was an avalanche, but what happened is United States and India have actually admitted to losing a nuclear device in the mountains. And this has never been recovered till now. Uh, and this is one of those, they've sent multiple rescue missions, but they've never been able to find it. Uh, can you guess what conspiracy theories this has led to? So this is a fact, but what conspiracy theories has it led to? This is just for fun. Oh, that um, Ganga water is getting radioactivity due to this. So that is one of the lesson. Uh, These uh, uh, are melting due to this device. Yes, absolutely right. Right. So one of the theories behind the 2011 floods in Uttarakhand is the fact that uh, one of the scientists said that, you know, it's possible that the Uttarakhand core has led to the heating of the glaciers and that actually led to the floods. The other obvious uh, conspiracy theory is that China has stolen it. Uh, right, but this is basically the fact that, is that they lost the plutonium core. Um, it was answered by team 10. Yeah. Uh, Vedan, also, can you just uh, confirm the pound scoring? Are you revealing the pound scoring? Yes. Okay, so team 3, 10 and 12 get it right on the pound. Oh, 10 direct it was. Yes. Uh, 3 and 12 got it right on the pound. 6 and 11 got it wrong. What did 6 and 11 guess? Uh, one of them guessed metric system versus imperial system confusion. And one said they didn't, they weren't able to climb the Nanda Devi. Nice case. Right. Team nine came very close. Uh, so team 11, this is your direct, right? So we're going to play a video. This documentary was shot a few weeks after this, the leading lady in the documentary passed away. All right. Uh, before, all right. Uh, her name is now famous all over the world and all across us. Identify her for five points. And what was her shocking deathbed confession? Take a look at the video. This is my deathbed confession. It was 1969. She was totally lost in her own mess. I knew what she needed. He said, do you like what you're doing? Norma McCorvey has and found religion. Norma McCorvey, born again Christian. Hallelujah! The betrayal. All I'm doing is watching out for Norma's ass. Is she playing this? If you're nice and quiet and polite, nobody pays any attention to you. God just worked a miracle. She jumped from spawn of Satan to a child of Christ. If it were known she was a lesbian, she would be kicked out. I loved her with all my heart. When you do what we did to Norma, you lose your soul. This is for all the women to come after me. Her whole life was an attempt to tell her real story. Okay, question to team 11, just waiting for pounds to close. Vedan, anybody pouncing before I close in five seconds? Seven is pounds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pounds is close. Uh, Vedan, can you confirm the teams that have pounds? Is it our uh, answer? Just one second. Vedan? Uh, two has pounds over uh, the two parts over two different messages. Uh, just FYI. Got it. Okay, so seven and two have pounced. Uh, team 11, this is your direct. Okay. 
Shall shall we answer? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll say this is uh, Jane Roe, basically of Roe and Wade, and the confession was that she turned uh, pro life, you know, uh, after the conversion. Okay, uh, team twelve. Oh, my guess is that uh, she was a lesbian, but she was she used to be an evangelical preacher or something. Got it. Uh, team one. You take a guess. Ah, uh, she had an affair with. Okay. Team two. They pounced. They pounced. Okay. Sorry. Team two pounced. Team three. Basically, she got okay. reincarnated. There is some re reincarnation funda here. Okay. That uh, and her death confession. That death confession was that she never died actually. And oh, the, nice. they they were claiming that she was re reincarnated, but she never died. Sounds like a very interesting question, but no. Uh, team four. Niam. Am I audible now? Yes. Hello. Barely. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so, she, she. Okay, cool. Uh, she survived the Jonestown massacre, okay. and uh, her confession was uh, she. She put the coal. She poisoned the coal. Eh? <laughs> nice. Team five. Yeah. This is row of uh, Wade versus row for the second part. If just a second. You guys have muted yourself. Uh, we'll say she never got the abortion finally. Okay, team six. Ah, uh, yeah, but we're gonna stick with the row thing. Um, for the second part, uh, if you've been listening closely to the other answers, you should be able to work this out. <laughs> no question. Sure, yeah. But we haven't. Yeah. Uh, her shocking deathbed confession was. I don't know, honestly. Okay. She Seven couldn't. Pounds. She couldn't conceive. Yeah. Okay. In the first. Uh, one. Seven pounds. Teammate. A oh, teammate also pounds. Okay. Teammate also pounds. And nine, and ten. Uh, so we'll say uh, that she switched. I mean, she switched sides because of the money. Is that is that something? She's. What does that mean? Can you explain? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, she was. Uh, I mean, she was uh, against uh, abortion, and she moved. I mean, uh, then she moved. I mean, she. Okay, I'm getting confused, but yeah, I'll just say that she switched sides for money, basically. Like there was no actual uh, basis for her case or something like that. Okay, I'll give full ten points to Team Nine for giving a botched up answer, but your first answer was absolutely right. Five points to Team Eleven who answered row first, right? Uh, the correct answer is that uh, actually. Jane Roe actually had multiple switches, right? Uh, so this is, of course, Jane Roe of the famous Roe versus Wade, right? She originally switched sides, saying that she's actually anti-abortion after she won the case, and then she joined uh, the Christian groups uh, and supported the anti-abortion movements. A few days before she died, she actually gave this interview that saying that she had actually been paid for saying she, that she was anti-abortion. Right, so that second switch is what she admitted on her deathbed, uh, and that was the documentary on her life. So ten points to team nine, and five points to team eleven. Vedan, you want to confirm the pounds points? Ah, uh, yeah, team two and seven got it right on the pounds. Nice. Team eight then. Nice. Ah, uh, team five gets five points, right? Yes. Okay. Team eleven gets five points. It was team eleven, no? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Right. Cool. Uh, the next question to Team Ten. This is your direct. When it uh, uh, when it started out, it was called Timurit, right? And when it was at its peak, it was called Gurkhani. We know it by another name that might have been popularized by the British. What is the more common name that succeeded the names Timurit and Gurkhani? Okay. Two teams have pounds. Team three and Team seven. Okay. And pounds closes in five, four, three, two, and one. Any other teams? Team twelve and two, and eleven. Okay. Team ten. This is your direct. 
Sir, can we say the answer? Yes, please. Sir, is it the Mughals? Can you explain? Uh, so basically, they they descend from the dynasty of Timur, the lame, right? So yeah. that is how the Murid comes. Gurkhani was what they used to call themselves, if I'm not wrong. And then Britishers gave them this eponymous name, which we all know, Mughals. That's absolutely right. 10 points to team 10. Uh, this is the name that we're more familiar with is Mughals. Mughals used to call their empire as Gurkhani. Uh, and the one that Babur started was called Timurid, uh, named after Timur. And Mughal is essentially a corruption of Mongol uh, because they British believed they had some connection to Genghis Khan. And that's why we call them Mughals. Right. Uh, Vedang, uh, on pounds, did everybody get it right? Yeah, everybody got it right on the pounds. Right. So that's 2, 3, 7, 11 and 12. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Next question to team 11. This is an interesting question, right? So on the left, you see this 1971 Hindi movie called Badnam Basti, which is claimed to be India's first gay film. On the right, I'm going to show you a clip. This is a clip from a Thomas Edison movie from the 1890s called The Gay Brothers. Right? What is unusually common to these films and their claims to fame? This is a slightly involved answer. So there's something common to both Badnam Basti and the Gay Brothers. Anybody pouncing with them? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I didn't think so. Cool. Uh, we'll give more time on the guesses, uh, hoping to hear some interesting guesses. So pounce closes in three, two, and one. Team 11, this is your question. Team 11. We'll pass you, Abid, if you don't have answer. No, going, going for it, Abid. Sure. Go for it. Okay, so uh, we'll say basically they're both based on the same short story or novel. An Indian short story. Thomas Edison adapted an Indian uh, short story. Yeah, uh, not that's what's right unusual hunter. about it. That's what's unusual about it. Team 12. This is slightly involved, uh, Fanda. Yeah, go ahead. I think so. Uh, for the lack of a better guess, this yes. uses the same type of camera or direction technique. As That's not unusual, right? And I'm talking about the claims to fame that is written at the bottom as well. Um, team 13, sorry, uh, team 1. Pass, pass, Palash. We're guessing that these are the first films uh, which use live audio recording along with the shooting of the film. Okay, no, team two. Siddharth and team uh, what, uh, what did team one answer? They say something about audio and so on. It's not the right answer, uh, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll say that uh, the, each of the movies, Badnam Basti and uh, the Gay Brothers, were the first movies to be banned in their respective countries for obscenity. So, nice. uh, Badnam Basti. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, so Badnam Basti was the um, first movie in independent India to be banned for obscenity. And Gay Brothers was the first film ever in the United States to be banned for obscenity. Nice guess. Uh, banning censorship makes good sense. Uh, team 3, Nikhil and team. So, I guess it's the film. To the first on screen same sex kiss. Got it. One of those first kisses things. No, team four. Yeah, uh, so take a guess saying please. The writers for both of them came out as gay during the shooting of the movie or just before the shooting of the movie. So that was unusual in that way. Nice. The writers uh, came out in public. No. Uh, team five, Siddharth and team. Uh, we'll say that, uh, I mean, the source material for these two films, whatever it was, I mean, they were written by, uh, I mean, I mean, whoever was gay and they were a gay couple also. So, yeah. 
Okay, that seems fairly usual and normal, but we have to come with something that's unusual. Team six, uh, Italy watching. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. I'd uh, I'd guess something like this are the first movies to employ uh twenty three frames per second or something like that. Okay, no, it has to do with the context here, folks. Uh, team seven. We'll say that uh, you know. This is the first time that actually openly gay artists were used as like the lead characters in the movie. Prior to this, any depiction of gay, you know, characters on screen were depicted by straight people. Whereas this is probably one instance of where they used gay people to cast. Interesting, uh, uh, and definitely would have been progressive at that time. But no, Team Eight excels here. Uh, we'll ask. Take a guess. Uh, our guess was answered by the uh, previous one. Okay. <laughs> Standard guess. Our uh, team nine. Uh, okay. Uh, so nothing to do with gay or anything. So we say both of these movies were lost and they were found at the same place. Oh, nice. The Indian film and Thomas Edison's film were found <laughs> in the same place. No. Uh, team ten. The last team to take a guess. Uh, we'd say that this. Casted all male characters in the first film without a female character, all male. Okay, no, no that's an interesting guess as well. There have been movies uh, since the seventies which are all male cast. Um, I, I think the correct uh, uh, clue here would have been to say that you know what is the misnomer that is common uh, to both. Uh, the correct answer is that neither of them are actually gay films or uh, about gays, right? Technically, uh, so. Badnam Basti is actually about two men who are in heterosexual relationships with their wives, uh, love them, and also fall in love with men. So they actually technically a first bisexual film. They're not actually India's first gay film. Edison's Dick- Dickinson uh, Dixon experimental sound film was renamed by media as the Gay Brothers because they saw two men dancing and they thought that they must be in love with each other. But actually, it was just a musical. It's actually the first film to have live sound. Right, so neither of these films are actually gay film. They're just called by media as India's first gay film, from the world's gay, first gay film, and so on and so forth. Right, so that's the interesting connection uh, between the two. No one got that one uh, right, but had a sense of interesting questions. Um, cool. Next question to Team Twelve, since no one answered that. Yeah, what was last done in 1976 and is now planned for 2026? If done as per current methods, South of India will end up with less than quarter of its current status. What are we talking about? This is Team Twelve's question. Just waiting for people to pounce. Ah, uh, Team Three pounced. Okay. Team Two pounced. Team Seven pounced. Ah, uh, Team Eleven is pouncing. Okay. Team Eight pounced. Uh, team eleven has pounced. Somebody named Niam. I don't see your team name. So Niam is. I don't think is participating. Team four. Uh, Kishore and Niam. Team four. Uh, can you please rename? Yeah, I'll ask him. Uh, yeah. Dropping it. Yeah. Okay, pounce close. I guess. Yes. Can you just repeat the teams that are pounced? Uh. Team two, three, seven, eight, eleven, and four. Got it. Team twelve. Oh, I think so. A delimination exercise for parliamentary seats. What does that mean? Ah, uh, that uh, the number, the parliamentary number of parliamentary seats will be reallocated as per the proportion of population of each state. So. when it was last done the south had a much higher proportion of population but what is it called delimination okay team 1 okay mm-hmm. so again we are going to get number of seats in the parliament and i think it's not delimination but delimitation yeah that's the right answer i'm looking for so plus 10 to team 1 it, it's not called delimitation it's called delimitation 
uh, right? This is where the boundaries are drawn and, you know, constituency seats are uh, uh, rejected for each state. Uh, points, Vedang, on pounds? Uh, there is a confusion in pounds. Some have mentioned the funda, but not funda is fine. delimitation. Right, it's but fine, mentioning right? funda in some other term is not acceptable. Okay. Right, and so this is the delimitation exercise. Go ahead. One team has written only seats in parliament, so... Minus not, 20. not. We can't give it minus ten for that. Please. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. then fine. Two, three, and seven get it right on the count. Then eight and eleven don't. Two, three, and seven, and four. Uh eight and eleven don't get it. Four. Oh, new. Yeah. Uh, new four. New. They said reorganization of seats in Lok Sabha. To be. Which is the funder, right? Which will we'll give it to you? We'll give it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But didn't I say something similar? I just you did so you get five uh, points for it. Yeah, you get five Sorry. points. You get five. Team twelve gets yeah. five. Yeah. Awesome. Let's move on to the next question. This is to team two. Just connect all three. Uh, do you want this specific event or? I nice. just want a connection, Pandavar. guys. Don't give any more clues to other teams. Just chill, right? Just give us one answer. That's it. <laughs> okay, team six has pounds. Team seven has pounds. Team three has pounds. Team 4 said pounds, but I didn't get their answer. Okay. <laughs> they just said pounds. Yeah. Team nice. 10 pounds. Team 4 also pounds. Yeah, they, I got their answer. Can you just repeat the teams of pounds, please? Okay. Team 6, 7, 3, 4, and 10. Done. Team 2, this is your direct. What is right. common to Sajid Nadiawala, Kicha Sudeep, and Nikhil Khamal? You'd say this is something to do with the Celebrity Cricket League. Okay, got and, it. Team uh, 3 pounds, okay. Team 4 pounds, Team 5. Sorry, what did Team 2 say? Celebrity Cricket League. Were you thinking okay. of Celebrity Cricket League? We'll say all of their company names have a number. For example, a 0. 0. Nice, nice. Um, team 6 and 7 pounds, uh, Team 8. Uh, we'll pass. Take a guess. We'll force you to take a guess. Or you get minus 10. Okay. Uh, they get, they, have, they interact on Twitter. Something to Twitter I heard. So I'll pass to team 9. Huh, so we'll say these people got banned from chess.com for cheating against Vishwanathan Anand. I think it's that. The second part is what I'm looking for. They all cheated against Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, yes. So it's not just one person. Right, uh, so that was team nine, I think, who got it right. Yeah. Vedang, confirm uh, pound scores. Okay, so team three said that they played all three played against Vishwanathan Anand, but Mind they stand. specifically mentioned oh. that Kitcha and Nitin were blamed for cheating. Only the two minus we were looking for overall correct. So if they pounce, yeah. that's their uh, funeral. Yeah. Okay, okay, team Tenzin said banned from chess.com. So we're not looking for that, right? No, minus 10 there as well. Okay, so team 4 gets it right. No, 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 team 4 not. Team 4 said played against Anand in a charity event. So not in the full part. Cheated and Vishwanathan Anand should yeah. be there in the answer. Yeah. Uh, so okay. just a clarification. So basically I wrote two, ha two have cheated and three played the online chess thing. So like... And it's the closest answer to what you would look You can't for. give multiple answers and especially on pounds, right? I don't think... Uh, no, no, I'm uh, not giving know. multiple answers. Huh. I just said in the in the flow that they were blamed for cheating as well and all... Three Minus 10. Uh, pounds needs money. to be accurate. Otherwise, it's not fair to the other teams. Uh, moving on, Veda. Got it. Fair okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, we don't team not banned from chess.com. As in, that connects them all. There are many people who have been banned from chess.com. Uh, we are talking about three people who cheated against Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, any other we points? actually wrote, know? they did a uh, violation of fair play. They ended, correct? Again, is Vishwanathan Anand in your answer? No, sir. No. Then it can't be, right? Okay, okay sir. Fine. Okay. Direct, who all got the points or direct? Nine. Uh, just a second. Team six. Ten points. Uh, pound stunned. Yeah, 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 you got it right. We're clarifying. Just hold on. 
Yeah, six and seven got it right on the pounds. Three, four, and Thank ten didn't. And Thank nine got get ten points. All right. All right. Great. Okay. Next question to team ten. After that, fairly confusing answer. I hope everyone's getting the just ideas. Uh, you know, if you're getting, if you're pouncing, then you have to be confident of the complete answer. Team ten, this is your question. Whose remarkable consistency is reflected here? Team five. Top ten for more than seventeen. When I host quizzes and okay. offline quizzes, I have a rule called civilized pounds, which is not to interrupt <laughs> the quiz master when uh, he's reading the question. You typically get a minus five and additional for that uncivilized quizzing. Uh, but go ahead, pounds. Okay, two, three, and five have pounds already. Nice. Seven has pounds. Okay, and pounds close in three, two, and one. Okay, so I'm only accepting two, three, five, and seven pounds. Brilliant. Uh, question team. Oh, so not five. Two, three, and seven. Sorry. Yes. Can you repeat the numbers once again? So everyone is clear. Oh, sorry. Two, three, five, and seven. Uh, oh, hi, we pounced as well. We gave the answer before you closed it. Does that? Oh, seven is the Just last team I'm accepting. Ah, seven because, we accepted. Yeah, seven is the last team. Uh, Okay. Who's the other team? Saying, uh, no, this is team four. I he was still team four. Just accept your three. answer, Virang. Let's move forward. Okay. okay. Cool. Team ten. Tell us the guess. Sir, is it the ICC ranking for uh, James Anderson? No. Team eleven. Abid and team. Abid and Ratim. You guys are mute. If you're saying. You say. We'll say we'll say Afridi. Afridi, no team twelve. Uh, I'd like to say top ten. Um, Tendulkar's bat. Okay, Tendulkar's batting. Um, thirteen. Uh, team one. Sorry, I'm not saying it's not uh uh one. Uh, we'll say Dravid. 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 Two, three, four, five pounds. Six. Uh, I'll say Julian Goswami. And what is this? Uh, I mean, he's been in the top ten bowlers of the world's uh, list. That's absolutely right. Um, points to uh, uh, all those who pounced, and this is Julian Goswami, uh, who's been dominating the bowling uh, uh, over seventeen years. She's been in the top ten. So it's not Tendulkar, it's not Dravid, or any of the other names that you all suggested. Uh, Vedang points. Okay, two, three, four, five. Get it right on the pounds. Seven didn't, and six got it right on the direct. Right. Next question to team seven. Or we actually, yeah, we are moving to round uh, two. Um, Vedang, shall we look at the scores? Yeah, sure. Updated. Okay, this is a, a chance for all of you to just confirm if the scores are right. Uh, hope my screen is visible. So we have pass pass palash at ten. You put at thirty. Uh, Thirty, along with Jason Bonvita and Red Warriors, uh, leading the quiz currently is Team Twelve at Stavia Titans. Uh, we also have Bizin Three and Vast Deference and Team Raging Bull at twenty, and then Checkmates and Idli Watching are at ten, and Excelsior is at minus twenty. Any clarifications yeah. or corrections? We are at twenty, I think. If if Each question is worth ten because we answered the first question and we answered the three limitation on the first. First question was all direct. Yes, D limitation. They answered both parts, but they got plus ten. Vedang, just oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Yes, first question we gave them. Just wanted points. to ask. Scoring for pounds is plus ten minus ten. That's right. Fine. Yeah. First question ten points we gave to team one. Yeah. 
and the delimitation also is 10 oh that's 10 plus 10 yes okay yeah till cool um starting with team 7 and going in reverse um team 7 this is your direct again open for pounds to everyone right what quintessential indian ingredient has a royal misnomer because people corrupted the world word for black and has nothing to do with royalty right so what ingredient found in most indian kitchens has a royal misnomer Why this is going anti-clockwise from seven, right? That's right. Team seven anti-clockwise. Also, is pounds open right now? Pounds is open right now. Until I say pounds is closed, it's open. Okay, team eleven. Already pounced. Pounced. Yeah, eleven yeah, has already pounced. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else pouncing? Uh, twelve. Okay, pounds close in five, four, three, two, and one. So eleven and twelve only pounds. Team seven, this is your turn. We're going to guess. Team six. Yeah. Should we guess? Yes, please. We're going to say Rajma. Rajma is a very nice guess, but not the right answer. Team six. Idli watching enthusiasts. This is right up your alley. Um, yeah, it should be, uh, but we don't care. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, Shahi biryani, something to it. Shahi biryani powder. Okay, six answered. Shahi biryani, five. Also, shajira. What is it? Shajira is like a biryani kind of masala they use, like a dry masala they use in biryani. That's absolutely right. It's not Shahi biryani, but shajira, right? Uh, it is nothing to do with royalty, but Shah comes from the word for black, which is Sia. Right, so ten points to team five who got it right on direct. Excellent answer. Um, Vedang, eleven and twelve. Eleven and twelve get get got it wrong. They got both got it wrong. What did they say? Uh, one said shakkar and one said hing. Nice. Okay. Uh, just one request to everyone: just uh, your hands need to be visible throughout the entire quiz uh, on the screen. uh thanks to all of you who are already doing that but the rest of you let's uh, play fair right uh, next question is to team 4 when she became an author she chose a pseudonym that came from her great grandmother in naming herself she made a stylistic choice which according to her would help focus the attention on her work rather than on her name five points for who this person is and five points for what stylistic choice did she make so that people would focus on her work and not on her name team five pounds all right all right you don't need to shout that pounds you can just like yeah, send in your you guess you can just you can just type the answer i am seeing it you don't need to type also pounds you see the answer <laughs> this is team four direct we're going to close pounds in 5 4 3 2 1 vedant is closed Uh, okay, just I just got in the whole thing. Just five seconds. Okay, I got one pound from team ten. Okay, thank you. And who's the team that's writing still? Ah, uh, team five. I got their pounds. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, pounds is closed. Team ten and five have pounds. Team four. This is okay. your direct. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Okay. So uh, this is John John Catley and Rowling, J K Rowling. The reason she used uh, J K because it. it looks like it's like a man's name so that's why more eyeballs because man you are absolutely right about jk rolling and why she chose jk but that's not the answer to this question uh, team 3 <laughs> okay we will uh, i'm going to say agatha christie and stylistic choice being is the way her a and c are connected and people can focus on poiro poiro who is the main character okay uh, some might argue but okay team 2 
team two. Are you guys here? Yeah. So we'll just go with Agatha Christie again, and uh, she. I think her pseudonym was Mary West McCord or something. So Mary is like a generic first name, so could be any Mary, like a Tom Dick Mary. So okay, nice. Um, team one. Yeah, Agatha Christie and the fact that her name was always hand in some handwritten form, so that people would just ignore what it means. Okay. That's team one's uh, direct. Moving to team twelve, I'll just make life thing easier for everyone. It is not Agatha Christie, right? I'll just put everyone out of their misery. Okay. Um, and once again, requesting everyone to just make sure the hands are visible. But yeah, go ahead, team twelve. Uh, I had the same guess as the J.K. Rowling one, so it doesn't matter. Really. Okay, team eleven. Yeah, so we'll guess uh, bell hooks and uh, not using capitalization or using lowercase for a names all without time. That's absolutely right. Ten points to team eleven. Uh, this is bell hooks, uh, and this is the reason why B and H are always in small. She doesn't allow for capitalization because she wants people wants people to focus on her work and not on her name and her name. It's, uh, right. Uh, that's absolutely right. Ten points to team eleven. Um, Vedang five and ten got it right. Uh, no parts. No, 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 no. Minus ten to both. Just give me a second. Question to team ten. This is your question. This concept was introduced in the book China Man. the legend of pradeep matthew and this is ignore the typo there so this is a game that you can play in the book right what is the game or the concept that you can play according to the book given the names below ignore the third line in the question but a game or a concept explained in the book just give me an explanation of what this is i'm looking for a specific name for this game for 5 points and explanation will get you 5 points okay team 7 has pounced if uh, they given the name that's good enough either yeah. what yeah, do yeah, you yeah. mean by the explanation as in the explanation yeah exactly is there a sorry uh, for pounds yeah, just the explanation won't do right you want no, the name for pounds for the pounds i need the name okay for a direct i need name and explanation So this has a name. So we okay. say team seven has pounced and they have explained as well. Nice, and they got the name as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Great. Ten points to them. Team ten. I mean, we don't get a negative, right? For guessing. No, not at all, dude. Like I said, right, right in the right. beginning, capital letters, no negatives. Right, right, right. So I mean, China man bowling, which is like uh, like how you bowl and cricket. So Sagan Mustak and all of these people there are these are China man bowlers. And I would say, um, I mean, I mean the thing is like we can we can see the lines over here, uh, the lines which are joining uh, different I mean, different objects in the in the title. So let's say the spin is towards any 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 direction. I mean that's a Got it. Nice guess and story. Team nine. Uh, so we say the concept is a uh, hand cricket. Okay. <laughs> Which is just going by the hand in, on the book cover. So we thought hand cricket. Please. The names of cricketers. Don't judge a book by its cover. So ignore okay. the book cover. Uh, team eight. Uh, we'll pass. We have no clue. This is one of those workable questions. So we'll force you to uh, take a guess. Um, red thread of fate. I mean, I'm just uh, shooting in the dark here. Please. Okay. Yeah. The red thread of fate. Okay. No. Team seven pounds. Team six. So, so the funda is basically Saklin Mushtaq is a cricketer. Mushtaq Mahmud is a cricketer. Mahmud Wasim is a cricketer. Wasim Akram is a cricketer. And it continues. And I'm trying to come up with a name for it. Very so, nice. cricketer, cricketer chain or something like that. 
cricketer chain is not the right answer who can come up with a better name team 5 So yeah, we had the second part as in Sagreen Mustaq, Mustaq Muhammad, all of those are cricketers as in Kasim, uh, Umar, Umar Akmal. Uh, we'll call it string cricket because there is a long string which is going. Very yeah. nice. Four. Me okay. and team. Yeah. yeah. So we're going from a different angle. Uh, Chinese whispers because China men. So if you say those names, you they're most probably. They'll get misspelled. You get the different thing. You probably get Akmal at the end. Chinese whispers. I like it. No, three. Yeah. So basically, the concept is correct that the clan Mustag Mustag Muhammad was team. All of them are cricketers. But yes, the concept is cricket whispers. So not Chinese whispers. <laughs> not Chinese whispers. <laughs> cricket whispers. Very nice. Uh, team two. Calvin and team. Calvin Sadat. We'll say yeah. Pakistan string. Paki string, no. Uh, one. Team one. Yeah. No, no. You said will pass. Oh, you said will pass. And twelve after eleven. Uh, I would guess it's sort of cricket atlas where you have to do it in chains of cricketers. Okay, eleven. Uh, we'll say we'll say Pakistani whispers. Okay, Pakistani Pakistan. whispers, cricket whispers, Chinese whispers. No, team seven. You want to tell us the answer? I have another guess. Ah, oh, yes, please. Is this called, is this called cricket, cricket Antakshari? Eight. Oh, okay. Oh, all Cricketer that. name Antakshari. No, it's not cricket Antakshari, but okay. you were thinking so tape talk, cricket yeah. because Pakistani players tape ball cricket and all that. No. Shrinath and JK, I guess you just pounced and got it right, right? No, no, no. They explained the thing, but the term they got it wrong. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I thought they got both parts right, and I was no, no, no. only half of this. Oh no! So most of you got the funda right. Uh, so plus five to team six who got the absolute right answer. So basically, it's a string of names, uh, and this is called seamless Pakistanis. Right, where essentially you can stitch together any two names, and it's actual name of a cr- Pakistani cricketer. Uh, so, unfortunately, minus ten to team seven, plus five to team six, and the next question goes to team five. Okay, around two briefly to have a name. This thing was more than two miles wide and one hundred feet tall at its birth. Big enough to dwarf the Colosseum in Rome and all the pyramids put together, it would tower over the largest steamship ever conceived. What is being described here? So it doesn't have a name. It was, it existed okay. for too short a time. Or But when it was two and three pounds. Okay. Pounds is open for another five seconds. Size blank indicators. No. Okay, pounds is closed. Vedan, is that two and three or anybody else? Oh yeah, just two and three. Excellent. Team five, this is your direct. What is being described here? That would be hundred feet tall, two miles wide, big enough to dwarf the Colosseum in Rome, and all the pyramids put together. I'll say okay. I mean, it could be wrong. Uh, so I'll say this is Moses parting the Red Sea, and the wave height of the wave is that probably wow, very specific. The waves that Moses parted. No, <laughs> team four. Team four, you're on mute. Niam and yeah. Yeah. So Tower of Babel. Not Tower of Babel. Two and three pounds. One. So we'll say the mushroom cloud after the Second World War bombing. Atom atom bomb. No. Team twelve. Team twelve, can you hear me? Is it? Oh, uh, my guess would be on the Colossus of Rhodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Colossus of Rhodes that would dwarf the Colosseum at Rome. Okay, no. Team eleven. We'll guess uh, this is the iceberg that Titanic hit. 
that's absolutely right uh, this is the iceberg that lived only for like three weeks uh, this is the iceberg that was hit by the titanic and that's how big it was described as by the Smithsonian magazine uh, 10 points to team 11 i think that was um, next question to team 10 okay antim pangal is the first indian woman to win gold at the world junior championships what why is what is the reason why her name is so basically this one second hold on pounce is open pounce is open okay four and five have written pounce i have not got their answer yet sure we should clarify next time that pounce he is, is pouncing he is pouncing and typing okay yeah 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 like you guys can type the answer fine it's like putting kerchief uh... <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, three, five, seven, nine. I've got their answers. Four, I've got their answer. Yeah. A team eleven is bouncing. Just press a second. Seven, eleven. Okay, three, seven, nine, five, four. 7 and 11. Can you just repeat, please? 3, 7, 9, hmm. 5, 4, 7 and 11. Okay, 11 is there. Got it. Uh, and this is team 10's question. After that, it goes to team 8. Yeah, team 10. Pounce is closed. Uh, so, Antim, as in Lars, so uh, she, in her family, where she belongs, uh, having a girl child was considered not such a good thing. And therefore, their parents wanted her to be the last child before her son would be born. So, I mean, that is how Antem, uh, Antem comes. Can you repeat it once again, please? Sir, actually, uh, it was like her parents were of the uh, were of the idea that they need a son, uh, like a boy uh, child. So, when she was born, they named her Antim, meaning the last, uh, expecting that she will be the last girl child born and they wanted a son next. Absolutely right. 10 points to you. Uh, that's all we're looking for, right? Uh, she's a wrestler from Haryana and she's the youngest among the siblings. Her parents had three daughters and she was the fourth. They named her Antim, hoping that they won't have any uh, more daughters. Yeah, Sai, uh, doubt with the pounces. A lot yes. of them has written last kid, but some of them has not specifically written last girl child. Uh, like some has. Last child has written, is also fine. Uh, that's last fine. child, okay. Yeah. Somebody has written last girl child to be allowed to be born in the village. Okay. <laughs> Should I go get them? No, no, we'll give points and move forward quickly. This is being live streamed. We don't want to get sued by okay. anybody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that is answered by question 10. Uh, sorry, team 10. This is to question uh, uh, team 9. direct was it? Or who answered it on the direct? Yeah. Sorry. 10 answered it on direct. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Moving 10 on. gets plus 10. Right? So everybody from 3, 7, 5, okay, 4, yeah. 9, and 11 got plus 10, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Team 9. <laughs> Team three also got plus ten, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something more. Yeah, yeah. Team three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven. Good. Okay. Team nine, this is your question on your screen and pounds open to everyone else. How was this Buddhist statue discovered? Similarly, what is different about this shipwreck? Right. So something is common to the discovery of this Buddhist statue and the discovery of the shipwreck. Just tell me what is common. One answer only, right? Just one answer. Oh, see, I am not very sure, but what I do, guys, you are not on mute. Whoever is not sure, is that that this is these are both in lake. Guys, 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 guys. So, guys, 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 Okay, we're, we're hitting yeah. pounces. 4, 11, 1, 10, 5, 12, 7. 4, 11. 1, 10, 5, uh, 12. Can you closing pounds now? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Team 9, this is your question.
uh, okay, so uh, both are, okay, how was this, was this statue found? Mainly because, uh, you know, when the water levels receded, uh, you know, this thing came out. And uh, was similarly different with the shipwreck. I mean, it's a similar thing what happened to the shipwreck. But the interesting thing is the shipwreck was found in, in a lake or uh, instead of an ocean. That's absolutely right. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, fairly simple. These essentially, essentially because of global warming, uh, they've been uh, they've been droughts and the water levels have decreased, uh, declined, and that's how we discovered this Nazi ship uh, after the Danube dried up, as well as uh, the Buddhist statue after the Yangtze dried up, right? Uh, just confirm the po pounds points, Vidang. Uh, water level, anything that uh, different yes. water level I'm giving, right? Yep, okay, yep, so yep. four, eleven, one, almost all of them got it right. Yeah. Yep. 4, 11, 1, 10, 5, and 12. Yeah. Awesome. And 7 as well? Yeah, 7 as well. 7 as well. Oh, 7 as well. Uh, actually, uh, we have written that yellow. Team 10, just team, team, 10, team 10, is it correct? Yes, yes, yes. Everybody you pause. Okay, thank you, sir. Just thank mention you. your team names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. moving on uh, to question uh, team 8. This symbol that you see on the right has replaced what famous entity in Russia following the exit of a particular company? I'm going to keep pounds open for 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, one, two, four, nine, one, and seven have pounds. Two, four, nine, seven, and one, is it? Yeah. And pounds okay. is closed now. Okay. 10, five, five six, 11 pounds before that. Yeah, 11, also five, and six. Four. Vedang did 11 pounds. Yeah, 11 pounds. Six okay. road pounds. I did not get that answer. So I'm <laughs> Guys, not accepting uh, this six. is not this is some new strategy that we're seeing uh, where just writing pounds is okay. not going to get you points. Six, no, uh, we six has it pounds. We, we answered. No, no, uh, we answered. We answered. Yeah. Uh, but yours I got after that it was closed. Okay, let's move out. Have they sent the answers? Yeah. yeah. So that's yes, they two, have, they have. Yeah. two, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, and one. Yeah. Okay. Team eight. Looks like you're the only team who didn't pounds, apart from team 12. Team 8? Uh, uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is all I'm looking for. Uh, fairly simple. This is the entity that has replaced McDonald's in Russia. Uh, anybody got negatives, Vedang? No. Okay. So moving on to team 7, this is your question, right? So giving his upbring, uh, given that his upbringing was mostly around Parel in Mumbai, Shivaji Satam, who's better known as ACB Pradyuman, says that he's a graduate of GSD. What is GSD according to Mr. Satam? So we all heard of NSD. What is GSD? Could you clarify if the second two words are the same in both the acronyms then? Yes. You're asking me if the GSD first one is same as GSD second one. No, no. You said it's a play on another acronym, right? NSD, I said. Yes. So the uh -huh. last two words are the same in both the acronyms. Is what I'm, I'm not clarifying all of that, right? So you just need to tell me okay. what is GSD. Team 12 pounds. Okay. And there's a reason why I'm not clarifying that, right? Uh, yeah. So team 12, anybody else bouncing? Guys, please just give the answer instead of writing pounds. Uh, it's easier. Just ignore uh, the pounds yeah. word at all. Uh, okay, team 12 and team 10. Other than that, like we're closing, right? Closing? Yeah. Yes. Closing, yeah, okay. Team 7, take a guess. Team 7. Uh, we'll say, uh, say uh, the, uh, the, the Ganpati Pandal school of drama. Something to do with the Pandals, the Ganesha, because Paril is where Lal Bhagcha Raja is there. We'll give it to you. Uh, right? So this is GST technically what he said uh, stands for Ganesh Utsav School of Drama. Uh, right? It's, it would technically be GUST and so on. But Ganesh Utsav, Ganesh Pandals will get you points. So 10 points to team 7, uh, 10, team 12 and 10. Uh, they didn't get it right. Okay. So they get minus 10 there. What yeah. did they say? Uh, one said Ghatkopar School of Drama and one said Graduate School of Detectives. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, next question to team six. Wow, pull that out. One second. Okay. Right. Who is this person seen here presenting the Filmfare Award in 1960? This is a question to team six. Oh, hold on, I can understand which person are you saying the person's face who's the no. person whose face you can see. Who can you would see. not okay, be asked. That would be very mean yeah. for me to ask you the person from the back of his head. Okay, team seven has pounced already. Okay. Team two has pounced. Uh, team nine, uh, team eleven. Pounds closing in five, four, three, two, and one. Anybody else? Seven, two, nine, eleven. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Team six, take a guess. Uh, so you want the guy who's facing the camera, yes? That's right. Uh, Do you know the person uh, whose face you can't see? I I mean I think that is uh, Armstrong. So I'm guessing this is maybe the Neil Armstrong. Not Neil Armstrong. Um, Neil Armstrong and Bollywood Connection appeared in yesterday's quiz. Team five. Uh, so this is the PM of Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. Abdul Gamal. Okay, team four. And I would like everybody's hands to be visible throughout the entire uh, quiz. Okay, going with yeah. uh, team five's guess. Abdul yes. Nasser. Nasser. General Nasser. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Uh, just out of being generous, we'll give five points to team, was it five? Yeah, team five who said something to the Egyptian uh, prime minister, but uh, 10 points to team four. Right? So this is uh, General Abdel Nasser, uh, who presented the Film Fair Award in 1960 while he was PM of Egypt. Uh, are we giving points for just Nasser? Yes. Okay, two, seven, nine, and 11 all get it right. Excellent. Right. Next question to team three. Okay. Uh, we are at the end of round two. Uh, Vedang, shall look at the scores? Let me know once scores updated. Yeah, yeah. It's updated, right? Wait, uh, it's, it's, no, it's being updated. Done. Done. So, folks, just confirm your individual scores. Right? Uh, so, leading the quiz is a tie between Jason Bonvita um, and Red Warriors at 70. We also have team two, you put at 60, followed by Vast Difference at 55, uh, followed by Checkmates at 50. And Wrath of Khan 45, Pass Pass Palash at 40, and then a bunch of teams at 30, 25, and 10, and Excel is here at minus 10. Um, getting back to the quiz. Okay. This is to team nine, and we're going back in clockwise. Team nine, this is your Derek. Once again, just a humble request to all of you to make sure that your hands are visible throughout the entire quiz. Uh, on screen. Just one uh, team four answered right. So shouldn't we get it? My bad. Um, sorry. This is team five's direct. I thought team ten answered it. So team five, this is your direct going clockwise. Okay. What was the unusual price that the winner of the Memphis Open got this year? This tournament is now defunct. They started giving the trophy in 2013 to highlight the city's contribution. Please ignore the this year part, right? So what was the unusual price the winner of the Memphis Open got every year, which is now a defunct tournament? They started the, giving this trophy in 2013 to highlight the C Memphis city's contribution. Nobody has bounced yet. Okay. Uh, sorry, whose direct is this? This is team five's direct. Hey, uh, and next is team six or team? Five? Yes, team six. 
uh, okay team 4 pounds how specific do you want the pounds to be like if i explain what i just want to know what the price is Pound still open? Yes. Do we answer team five? Just one five minutes seconds more. Okay, pounds is closed. Team uh, Vedan, can you just confirm who are the teams? Oh, only team four. Only team four. Okay. Team five. क्या बोलूँ? एक सेकंड. Just. We'll say so. This is a set of guitar and guitar plectrum because rock and roll started from Memphis. So all the musical connection. So we, I mean, logo looks like a guitar plectrum. So we'll say the the guitar plectrum and guitar. Ten points to you. Uh, that's all we were looking for. Uh, right. These are essentially Gibson guitars, uh, and Gibson factory is in Memphis and so on. So you should get basically custom made guitars for each of the winners. Uh, this wonderful tournament is no longer in existence. uh team 6 this is your direct next question on your screen right um again moving forward from uh, uh, sports what was unusual about federal roger federer's match at hail in 2013 where he teamed up with tommy has and said that after the game he felt naked and he would never do this ever again so just tell me why did he feel that he felt naked Nobody has pounced yet. Uh, we are pouncing. Uh, eleven is pounced. Okay, eleven, eleven. Yeah, I got your pounce. Yeah, eleven pounced. Can you repeat team eleven and just one? Only team eleven. Just team eleven. Okay. We can we answer? Yes, please. Uh, so I think he played without his headband. that's absolutely right all right he played without his headband uh, and he lost the match uh, and that's when he said that he felt naked about it so uh, 10 points to team 6 who got it right and 11 yeah they got it right 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 next question to team 7 on your screen here right so watch this video uh, this is a fun video from a 1950s movie based on an rk narayan novel called mr sampat one of the songs in this film might make you wonder whether this was actually from 2014 or from 1952 just tell me the name of this hopeful song bade aadmi madad karenge ha madad karenge bade aadmi madad karenge aur mohtaj jo karenge madad karenge बड़े आदमी मदद करेंगे गरीब और मोहताज करेंगे वो हर गिर नहीं मानेंगे जी हाँ कभी नहीं मानेंगे बड़े आदमी मदद करेंगे हर गिर को नहीं मानेंगे जी हाँ कभी न मानेंगे महलों में बैठे बैठे गलियों का दुख पहचानेंगे महलों में बैठे बैठे गलियों का दुख पहचानेंगे हर गिर को नहीं मानेंगे जी हाँ कभी न मानेंगे Okay, three and six have pounced. Three and six. Uh, eleven is pounced. also pounced. Eleven, eleven has also pounced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll two is pounced. Right. And we're not one, accepting any more pounces. One and four. Yeah, four is the last one. One and four. Three, six, and eleven, well. one and four. No, two. I have not got the answer, so okay, not accepting. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Vedan. Can we answer? Just one second, Vedan. Confirm, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Team seven. This is your direct guess. We're gonna say we're gonna guess. अच्छे दिन आएंगे. Okay, uh, Vedang, what are the pounds guesses? Yeah, अच्छे दिन. Yeah, everybody said that only. Right. So this is the song called "अच्छे दिन आ रहे हैं" or "अच्छे दिन आएंगे." <laughs> Okay. Uh, next question to team six. Sorry. Uh, next question, team eight. Okay. 
This lady uh, passed away in 2020. Uh, her name is Elizabeth. She's a Swiss. She was a Swiss national uh, then who lived in India after meeting her husband Ajit while in college in London. She's considered the pioneer of modern India. Her work largely focused on one particular set of buildings visited by many tourists and many Indians. Where would you find all of her design work? So she's considered one of the most uh, uh, important designers in Indian modern history of 20th century. Where do you see her work? This is question to team eight. Pounce is open for another 10 seconds. So you're looking for a set of buildings, finally. Yes, I just want one answer. What is the most important claim to fame? Vedang, anybody pouncing or pounce is Nobody, closed? nobody. Okay. Yeah. Pounce is closed, team eight. Okay, yeah. yeah. Where have we seen uh, Elizabeth's work? So when she passed away, Hindu had a headline saying the pioneer of India modern. Yeah. Okay. Uh, National Institute of Design. Not NID. Team nine. So uh, we'll say the archaeological survey of India plaque or something. Okay. Plaque is ASI plaque. Team 10. Maybe, maybe she designed the, the first Starbucks. Uh, the first Starbucks that was opened, the store. Starbucks in India visited by many tourists and Indians. Okay. Um, team 10. If you can hear me. It's 10, right? Yeah. Nine answered, right? Just to clarify. Red Warriors. Okay, team nine and ten are passed. Eleven. Abhi then team. Yeah, we'll we'll guess um, uh, embassies in you know embassies. Yeah. Okay, nice. Team twelve. Taj Hotel Mumbai. Sorry. Taj Hotel in Mumbai. Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai. Oh, her paintings uh, were based on Art Deco buildings in Mumbai. Okay, we'll give it to you. Uh, she essentially designed all of the Taj hotels in India, right? So right from the 60s, uh, she moved to India and she designed the Taj Mahal Palace and Hotel in Bombay, Udaipur, and every single one of the hotels in Taj uh, today are designed by Elizabeth Serkar or Sarkar, her name is. Uh, 10 points to team 12, I think that was. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Next question to team one. Okay. Who's explaining the rationale behind what, right? I joined in 1994 in part because the company's headquarters were close to my house. Uh, I had two daughters ages one and a half and 10 at the time and a husband whose office was nearby. This job offer made sense. We thought because the commute was short, I would be able to drive to the school and home to the baby in 15 minutes. Of course, though, that is the only reason why I chose this exuberant optimistic company, right? So which famous person explaining the rational behind what famous decision. Team one, this is your direct. Anybody pouncing? Our team six has pounced. Okay. 11, 11, 11 is going. Right. K K2? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's 11 pounds. is again just texting is, pounds. Uh, is the blank indicator? No. Uh, blank 11 is the indicator the entire 11 is also pounds. Pounds close in three, two, and one. Team one. Yeah. Team two. Team one, right? Yeah. 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 So we're guessing uh, Indira Nui and Pepsi. That's absolutely right. That's all I was looking for. Uh, this is what led Indira Nui to join PepsiCo because the house was right next to a house. Uh, uh, the office is close to a house, and it would save commute time for her and her kids. Uh, 10 points to team 1. 6 and 11 got right. Uh, 6 got it wrong. 11 got it right. What did 6 say? Uh, Sudha Murthy joining Telco. Okay, nice guess. Uh, next question to team 2. Okay. On 17 December 1967, Mr. Harold disappeared while swimming the in the sea near Port Sea in Victoria. An enormous search operation was mounted, but his never, body was never recovered. 
Upon his death, a number of conspiracy theories surfaced. The most famous that was, was that he was a spy from China. This is uh, then a 1983 book was written called The Dash Dash Was a Spy, claiming that rather than drowning, he actually boarded a submarine and lived the rest of his life in Beijing. Right. So all of this sounds similar to, you know, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's story uh, and conspiracy theories uh, around. Just tell me what are the two blanks that would help describe Harold? Uh, four, five, six, seven have bounced. Okay, four, five, six, seven, and pounds closes in three, two, one also pounds, and one, one and ten, one and ten. ten okay. Six, yeah. uh, question to team two. Uh, this is the Prime Minister uh, Harold Macmillan, the Prime Minister of Australia. That's absolutely right. The book was called uh, "The Prime Minister Was a Spy," uh, and there've been multiple conspiracy theories around what he did, what happened to him after this. Uh, fairly simple. Anyone got it wrong on the pounds? No. Everyone got it primes, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Next question, team three. Oops. Just a second. Okay. Team three. Um, what you see on the top right is the gravestone of this lady called Joanne Margaret Legge or Leg. That's her photograph at the bottom, right? The this gravestone or this grave is the only man-made structure in this particular region or location, right? The name of this region or location originates from a book authored by Frank Smith, whose expedition led to the region's discovery, right? So then Joanne Margaret Legg read Frank Smith's book, uh, was so enamored by what he wrote, uh, and she came here all the way uh, and slipped and fell and lost her life in the process. Joanne's sister, many years later in the 50s, uh, came here and built a tomb in her memory. And this tomb is now the only man-made structure in this location. Just tell me this location. Okay, 3, 4, 7, 10, 11, and 9 have pounds. 3, 4, 7, 10, 11, and 9 have pounds. Uh, pounds closes in 3, 2, 1. It is actually uh, team 3's direct. Uh, they didn't need okay. to put pounds. Yeah. 2, 6, 12. 12 is the last. Okay. So team five, you're the only one who's not pounced along with eight, I think. Multiple clues in the question. Team five. Yeah, sorry. It's ours, right? team five. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll say value of flowers. That's absolutely right. Uh, this is value of flowers. Uh, her uh, grave is the only uh, tomb or the man-made structure in value of flowers in Uttarakhand. Um, Right, with that, with the end of round three. Uh, whose direct was that? That was actually team three's direct, but team three didn't. They already pounced, so it went to team five. Okay. Okay. Team five got 10 on direct. Okay. Okay. Next uh, question is to team four, and this is the final round of the quiz. Before that, we'll just take a look at the scores. Just a sec, we'll be updating the scores. Sure. Okay, yeah, done. Done. Just give me a second. Can you share screen and just show it, uh, Veda? Ah, uh, yeah. Wait a second. Thank you. So yeah, here yeah, the scores. Just uh, just read out the scores. Give me a second. Okay, so Jason Bonvita with the lead with 100 points. And in the second place, there's a tie between vast difference 
and Ratav Khan with 85 points. Uh, the third place, there's also a tie between you, Put, and Pass Pass Palash with 80 points. And the rest, as you can see. Uh, hi, sorry, this is team four. I think we are on 90, not 70. Uh, 90. Wait, I'll check and let you know. Okay, good. Cool. Cool. Uh, scoring is cl uh, clarified, Vedang. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. I'll just clear it up all everything. Okay. Uh, starting the last round with team four and going in reverse. Uh, so team four, this is your Derek. Okay. Team four on your screen. This is a question. The following are some of the most famous Bollywood songs written by this famous Indian poet. This person has also interestingly worked mostly with Anu Malik throughout his entire career. Just look at these songs and just tell me who is this famous Indian poet who has written the uh, lyrics for these songs. Bumro Bumro and M Boleto Munabai are the two most famous songs that this person has written. Team 10, can I just see your hands on screen throughout the entire quiz, please? I think I'm tired of asking you uh, to do this multiple times. Okay, so we've team not been quizzing pounds. since yesterday. Yeah, they pounce, they pounce. Who? Team ten. Okay. Okay, pounce is closing in three, two, and one. Yeah. Team four. Okay. Uh, is it Gulzar? It's Gulzar. Not Gulzar. You confidently said it's cool, sir. Uh, team three. A famous Indian poet. This is to five, right? No. Sorry? No, this is to four. And then to three. Oh, so it's, uh, we, we should guess? Yes, team three should guess. Yeah, we'll just go very back. And maybe say all of them are adaptations of something written by Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro, no, team two. Uh, we'll say this is Javed Akhtar. Not Javed Akhtar, team one. Uh, we'll guess Anu Malik himself. <laughs> nice, nice guess, uh -huh. not Anu Malik. Uh, team 12. Oh, I would like to guess Neenthuru. Uh, Amita Bhattacharya. Okay, good guess. Um, team 11. Uh, we'll go for Mirza Ghalib, but Mirza Ghalib. Wow. Okay. Um, Mirza Ghalib coordinate, I mean, working with Anu Malik. No, team 10 pounced team nine. We're running out of Indian poets. So we say, uh, Rahat Indori. That's absolutely right. That was team nine's, uh, team nine. And what did team 10 guess? Yeah, Rahat Indori. Rathan Dori is absolutely right. So it's team eight's direct coming up. These are oh, all who the got songs. it right on the direct? Team nine. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, team seven. Who is this Bollywood actor who is the first to have had a photo shoot with Kendall Jenner, one of the most celebrated models in the world, as you all know? So, just tell me whose face is covered there. Vedang, is anybody pouncing? Uh, yes, two, uh, yeah, so 11 and 10 have pounds. Two teams have pounds. Uh, who's director? Who? Oh, 12 also. Oh, I was. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. 1, 12, 11, and 10. Uh, who's oh. director? Is Team 8's director. Seven and three also pounds. Okay, pounds is closed. 
teammate uh sharukh khan not sharukh khan team 7 pounds team 6 I don't know. Uh, first name that comes to mind is Vicky Kaushal for some reason. That's a good uh, name that comes to your mind. Uh, five. Is it Tiger Shroff? Not Tiger Shroff. Four. Fawad Khan. Not Fawad Khan. Uh, three pounds. Two didn't pounds. No, 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 two did not pounds. I didn't. I that's why I two. said two didn't pounds. Okay. Your answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll say uh, Ranveer Singh. Not Ranveer Singh, not Fawad Khan, not Tiger Shroff. Team one pounced. Team twelve, eleven, and ten pounced. Team nine. You're the last team. Sorry. We say Imran Khan. Not Imran Khan. Uh, who's the team that pounced on this? Veda, first. First uh, team one pounced first. Team one. This is Sushant. Sushant Singh Rajput is absolutely right. SSR Sushant Singh Rajput. Uh, all of these would get you points. Any negatives, uh, Vidhan? And uh, no. no. Right. So that's SSR, the first Indian actor to pose with Kendall Jenner. Next to team seven. Right. Uh, these paintings are special because they're made by someone who's not a famous painter per se, but he's a famous personality in some other field from India. Who is the painter from these? Just figure it out from the paintings below. So this is one of those uh, Sushant Singh Rajput like questions where you need to guess celebrity painters. Okay, team Teams. three, team eleven, team seven. Seven's direct it was. Okay. So we'll go to six. Team five. Team nine. And pounds close in three, two, and one. We have three different answers on the pounces, by the way. Very nice. Uh, pounce is closed, uh, Vedang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, eleven, seven, five, and nine are pounced. Team six. Yeah. Idli watching uh, enthusiasts. Right. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna guess Bala Sahib Thakre. Bala Sahib Thakre, no. Team five pounds. Team four. Uh, is it Mamta Banerjee? Not Mamta Banerjee, the other famous uh, celebrity artist. Team. Three pounds. Team two, Siddharth and Calvin. Uh, I'll say uh, Satyajit Ray. Not Satyajit Ray. Um, team one. Salman Khan is absolutely right. So it's not Satyajit Ray. It's not Rabindra Tagore, uh, but not Mamta Banerjee. But it's actually Salman Khan. Ten points to team one for getting that right. Vedang, what were the wrong answers and who got who got points? Ah, uh, five, seven, and eleven get it right on the pounds. Three and nine. One said Mamta Banerjee. One said uh, Satyajit Ray. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next question to team twelve. We are close to the end of today's quiz. So William Shakespeare hasn't written anything specifically on the subject, but has several times used the reference in his plays. So these are all the references from King Henry the Sixth, Troilus and Cressida. Merchant of Venice, all's well that ends well. What word would fill in all these blanks? My crown is in my heart, not on my head. Not decked with diamonds and dashed stones. Her bed is in dash. There she lies, a pearl. There's ornament is, but the gild show to a most dangerous sea. The beauteous scarf, veiling and dash beauty. Does dash like religious in mine error? I adore the sun that looks upon his worshipper. Blah blah blah. What is the common word for all these verses? This is team twelve, direct Veda. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, five and ten have bounced, and pounds closes in five, four, three, two, one. Team twelve. Uh, precious. Not precious. Team eleven. We'll go for India or Indian. That's absolutely right. These are the only references that Shakespeare made to the name India or Indian. So Indian stones and India like and so on, right? So points, Vidang. Okay, so five got it wrong. Ten got it right. What did five say? Kohinoor. Nice. Close. Uh, 
and team 11 got plus 10. So this next question is to team 10. Okay. What you see on the left uh, are some excerpts, some poems by a famous artist of the 13th century, who's also considered a serious poet, right? He's written close to 300 poems. Just tell me who this is. Those are illustrations that accompanied some of his poems. Just tell me who is this famous poet? Uh, sir, is it uh, Leonardo da Vinci? One second, hold on. Pounce is still open. Team 10, sorry, who was the one who answered just now? Team 10 itself, right? Okay, nobody has yeah, pounced cool. anywhere. Okay, nobody has pounced. Pounce close in 3, 2, and 1. 10's answer we're going to ignore. Moving to Team 9. Team uh, we'll say Johannes Kepler. Not Johannes Kepler. Team 8. Team 8 have left. Okay, Team 8 have left. Uh, team 7. Jason Bonvita. We'll yeah. say Michelangelo. Michelangelo is right answer. So Team 10 said Leonardo da Vinci. 13th century? Right Sorry? 13th century Michelangelo? Just give me a second if you. The timeline is off. Then. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he would have. Michael Angelo seems to be 15th century, if I'm not wrong. Correct, actually. You're right. You're right. Uh, there was an error there. Uh, we're going to scrap this question uh, uh, for that reason. Right? So uh, just ignore this question. Uh, moving on to the next question, coming back to team 10. This is your direct once again. If, if it's possible, could we look at the score? If it's possible. Just give me a second. Veda? Uh, yeah, wait. Okay, we'll come back to the scores. Uh, you want to confirm that for pounds, is it? Just give us a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can check the scores. Sir. Uh, hey, Sai, how many questions left? We have two more questions left. Vedang, just share the screen for scores, please, once it's ready. Oh, yeah. Once it's set. Ah, uh, here are the scores. Just check. So just five points gap between uh, Vrat of Khan and Jason Bonvita. So yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um. Cool. Then moving on. Just yeah. Just one second. I'm just replacing the earlier question. So, uh, Sai, if we go back to the original team, right? Like, who got this? Direction? Yes, team 10, it is. It tells you go. Okay, um, ignoring the earlier question on Michelangelo. So in 1970, Tunisia and Libya had poor diplomatic relations due to the uncovering of a plot targeting high ranking in, uh, officials involving Libya, right? It was exactly during that time when the first entry of a certain pop culture phenomenon was in development stage near the Tunisian border. This involved props that look similar to military vehicles and Libya threatened to go to war with Tunisia if they didn't get rid of the supposed military equipments. What caused a war almost between these two nations. Uh, can I ask the question, please? One second. This is question to team 10. Pounce is open. Uh, 
Okay, done. One six five eleven, right? Let me just show the score. It's done, right, Vedang? Yeah. Okay. One six five seven and eleven pounds. Yeah. Good. Fairly close. Oh, very close. Just give me a second. Right, so here are the scores. Uh, team seven, that's Jason Bonvita, is leading at one forty. Team ten um, or eleven, rather, uh, uh, Rothaf Khan at one thirty-five, followed by uh, vast difference at one hundred and five. And then we have two teams, uh, Pass Pass Palash and uh, Red Warriors at one hundred. Any correction in the scores? We got both Star Wars and the last question correct, and we were at one hundred and five. So Star Wars, I gave you points, but uh, the last question you just said film projection tech and did not mention uh, Maratha Mandir. Yeah. Oh, minus. minus ten, yeah. Cool. Uh, 
cool uh, we are at the end of today's quiz once again a big big shout out to rishabh and team uh, at i am amdabad for helping us put this together thanks everyone at uh, the, on the finals uh, hope you enjoyed the set would love to know your feedback uh, at the end of the quiz or you can even let us know later um this question is to team 8 oh sorry team 8 is not here so it's to team 7 who's leading the quiz at this stage here we go what is the literary connection that's common to all three right so i just need an explanation as well as the overall connect okay team 2 and team 5 have bounced okay team 2 and team 5 team 11 team 1 Okay, uh, pounds is closed. Vedang, team seven. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So, can we answer? Yes, please. So, uh, I think uh, the basic underlying connect that you're looking for is suitable boy. I think that's Vikram Seth and suitable boy. Karan Johar's autobiography was a play on suitable boy. I think it's called an unsuitable boy. And maybe the middle one is uh, I don't know some play on suitable boy. I think suitable girl. So, take a guess from the poster. What do you think it is? Girl, suitable girl or suitable woman that's all i'm looking for right so there are since we play on suitable boy by vikram seth uh, this is a documentary uh, by netflix which is about women in india who were forced into arranged marriages uh, that is called a suitable girl named after a suitable boy and karan johar's autobiography is called an unsuitable boy um, fun facts uh, just open for everyone since we're under the, the quiz which famous celebrity's daughter appears in this documentary Kimata, Seema Taparia is right. So Seema Taparia, Seema Aunty from Arrange uh, Indian Matchmaking, actually her daughter and herself appear in A Suitable Girl. Uh, and that's the end of the quiz, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed the set. Uh, that's the end of four rounds. A big, big shout out to the team at India wants to know for helping us put this together. Um, let's take a look at the most important scores, Vedang. Yeah, we are updating. and in the meanwhile we'll just end the live stream for those who are watching thanks to everyone on the live stream who are watching it as well yes done i hear the live stream is done or is still live streaming just checking But as well still live should be done Okay. Uh, here the scores. Winning the quiz with by five a margin of five points is Jason Bonvita. Congratulations, folks. Uh, if you can just unmute yourself and introduce yourselves, tell us where you're from, in case others don't know. So oh, hi, this is uh, Srinath, and my teammate is JK. Both of us are from Chennai. Thanks, Srinath. Um, second in second place is Rathav Khan, who again uh, had a fantastic performance yesterday in the Popki Kamai quiz. Uh, identify yourself, folks. Hi, I'm Abid from Bangalore. Hey, I'm Rokhtin from Kolkata. Nice. A Bangalore, Rok, uh, Calcutta connection during Durga Puja sounds amazing. Um, in third place is a uh, vast difference with one one five points. Uh, so my name is Abhinav Dhar. I am in Delhi right now. I don't know where I'm from. <laughs> like an existential philosophical uh, question from Abhinav Dha there. Uh, your I'm, I'm in Solo. Bangalore right now. Okay. Yeah, thanks to that. Right, uh, and then of course we had uh, uh, a close finish. Pass, pass, Palash who made it uh, into the finals at the last minute at 110, followed closely by Red Warriors and you put at 100. Um, checkmates, uh, uh, Bizentri, Idli watching enthusiasts, uh, Team Raging Bull. and trivia titans thank you so much for uh, some wonderful answers hope you enjoyed the quiz uh, that's all from all of us at india wants to know thanks vidang thanks aditya for helping us put this together uh i just had a question so do you guys like conduct this online quizzes regularly 
uh, we used to uh, idli watching enthusiasts, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> right now we're doing a lot of offline quizzes and some of online quizzes. We hope to start that soon on Discord. Okay. okay. Uh, is there any way like we can get to know if you are starting this? Like, yeah. So you can just follow us on Instagram. Uh, that's IWTK Quiz. India wants to know quiz. Uh, and you should be able to, uh, stay up to date. Uh, we also have a newsletter on Substack, uh, uh, and that should help you uh, inform you of the future events. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. It was a nice quiz. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. The recipe can also be nice. Thank you, nice quiz. Thank, you sir. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Sai, it's still on live stream. Yeah, I'm just switching that off. Give me a second. Awesome. Um, 